The Truth the Girls. Hi everyone, it's Sonia here. I gotta tell you the truth, I'm like super, super sad today. I'd like to be here making a video, a fun, interesting video about some business about the New World Order, but I just can't even do it. And um, I, didn't, I didn't want you to think I'd just like abandon you because I have a feeling I might be sad for a while. I don't know, maybe it'll just disappear tomorrow, but I, um, I felt like, oh well, you know what, I'm going to come and talk to you guys anyway. Just to let you know, I'm still thinking of you. Uh, we've been praying for you the whole time. And it's been really great being able to chat with you. I feel like I've gotten to know quite a few of you a little more personally, you know, through the chats. And it's been a cool thing that we've had going, um, this dialogue back and forth. So I'm going to tell you why I'm so sad, though. F freaking lockdown. I just censored myself. <laughs> I am just so sad today, like I've said this before you guys, when I get really sad I feel like I've been stabbed in the chest, like I feel poisoned, poisoned with sadness. It's like it's all over, it's it's so, I'm so saturated with it. I'm so sad that I, I cooked my son some crawfish for dinner and they were awful and I, I don't even have it in me to make another dinner. I just ate Brazil nuts and I don't know what we're going to eat, I just like I can't even do it. Yesterday. I got to see my family for the first time in three months, other than my mom. And I should be super happy, right? Except um, it, was, it was hard for a couple of reasons. Number one was the social distancing. So we were able to go and go in the backyard, but we had to keep strict six feet, obviously no physical contact. Uh, that is, you know, I think how you're supposed to do it, but also the other uh, members of my family work in healthcare and in hospitals. So, uh, you know, they're, they're very, very careful to observe this. <sighs> At one point, they said, well, if you do come into the house, oh, I, I don't think that's a good idea because we have to maintain the six feet distance. And I was just like, seriously, once we're in the house, we're all breathing the same air. I don't really think that the virus is going to care if we're six feet. I mean, if I'm here and I and I exhale and then and then you move through the cloud of whatever I exhaled, I mean, come on. You think the virus is going to be like, what, following me? You know, I, I refrain from arguing. I did just say, look, if once we're in the house, I don't think six feet, six feet makes any difference. Personally, I don't think six feet really makes that much difference in general. I mean, crowded conditions maybe, but it's not like the virus has a cutoff point, you know? But that was it. My son started like really arguing. <laughs> they were outside and, um, and you know, they're being told to like keep six feet. And my, my son is like, we're outside. What does it matter if we're three feet or six feet, you know? And I told him to shut up, okay? You're like in their house now, so you, you, you can't argue like that. And we have to respect, you know, what other people want. And we, we have to respect the law also. I mean, none of us want to get fines. We could observe the law and also all agree that it's a stupid law. But in this case, half of us think it's stupid and the other half don't. But anyhow, uh, the thing about the social distancing, it wasn't the arguments that was hard. It was, it was just really hard. Oh, my God. It was so hard for me to be there with my nieces. I have two beautiful nieces. Oh, my God, I'm going to cry. These nieces are like the daughters I never had. I don't even see them that often, but I love them so much. I can't even tell you. I love them like they were my own kids. I love them so much that like being apart from them and I'm apart from them a lot. I don't see them that often, but it like hurts. Like when my son goes to camp and I miss him so much that it hurts. That's how I feel about my nieces. I miss them so much. Especially the younger one, they call her little Sonia. She, oh no, I'm crying so much. I'm crying so much I have to get the toilet paper. Lucky for me, I have a lot of it. <laughs> my little niece, my younger one, they call her little Sonia. She's like, she's like my mini me. It's crazy. The other ones, they look like my sister-in-law's family. Uh, there's three. There's two nieces and a, and a nephew. And the older niece, she looks just like her granny. On, on my sister-in-law's side. She's just gorgeous. She looks just like her granny, though. And the um, my little nephew, he looks like his grandfather. <laughs> so 
so we have like mini me's of the grandparents and then we have the little the little Sonia you know she's the only one that looks like like my father's side of the family like I do you know uh, she's got the bags under the eyes you know and she has she just looks like me like me when I was little and um, I just always felt really connected to her she's not not only does she look like me but she's a lot like me she's not Aspie or anything at all but um, she just likes the same stuff that I like so it's great I, I can do all the things with her that I cannot do with my son like I am so good at making stuff and I and I actually really like making doll clothes and I can make these amazing Barbie doll dresses out of tissue paper they look like real like princess prom dresses but they're just tissue paper and and I can put velcro to you know put them on remove anyway um, and I really love doing that kind of stuff I can't do it with my son and the the older one the other um, niece she's like a tomboy but the little one she's like a girly girl I know you guys probably don't think that I'm that much of a girly girl but actually a lot of my interests besides all the scientific stuff um, pretty pretty girly you know like I don't do a lot with makeup and um, and hair and that and dressing myself it's not that but I'm very creative in like a very girly kind of way like I like to make things that are pretty you know and um, so I, I love to do that with my little niece you know and I've, oh, I've really missed it I've really missed being there with her and um, I just love so much doing stuff with her because she's so much into what I'm into, you know. So we have a great time. Play with all our dolls. I make stories, you know, and we have we have a lot of fun. But it's it's really hard to not see her, and I miss her so much all the time. I mean, I miss all three of them, but I'm closer with the girls because the, the, the youngest one, um, he's like five now, but I, I've only met him a few times because even though we live in the same city, believe it or not, we don't even see our own family that much. That's part of my whole like autism parent experience though. But um, that's how it was. And then the last year we started seeing them more. Um, I, I mean really the baby, I think I had seen him like once a year at Christmas until this this past year. So I don't know him as well, but I, I know the girls more. And um, yeah, I really miss them. So it was so hard to be there with them and to not be able to hold them, you know? And, and the thought that this is going to be like this for I don't know how long. I mean, I'm not the only one, right? I'm sure you have grandkids and nieces and nephews and, and whatever else that even if we're allowed to, um, to sort of be together, but you're not allowed to like hold your own family members. That's crazy. Anyway, the camera died, but um, I, I love my nieces so much. And it's so painful to like not be able to to be with them and to hold them, you know. It's like I feel it in my body, you know, like when you're when your kid is away. I don't know if I already just said this because like my camera died and I had to charge a battery. But, you know, when your kid is away and it's like your whole body aches to just hold them. Well, that's how I feel. So being over there, it was like really, really nice to see them. But it was so painful at the same time. And the thought that this might go on like this for a long time is like... It really hurts. There's a lot of articles now about how the lockdown is affecting people's mental health. And I can see why, you know. And um, the other thing that was hard was... You know, my, my older niece, I um, I do hooping, you know, I can do hoop tricks. And so I was entertaining the kids by doing some hoop tricks with their little hula hoop. And the older one wanted me to show her some tricks. So, yeah, I, you know, of course I want to do that. So I started teaching her some tricks. And I was just so blown away at how easy it is to teach kids who are, like, should I use the word neurotypical or whatever? I mean, basically, how easy it is to teach kids who are not my son. I'm not talking bad about my son, but with him, like, oh, it's such a struggle because he won't, he won't get on board, and he doesn't follow directions. I mean, he's been living with me all this time. He doesn't know much about hooping, even though he does hoop with me, and I've shown him some things. But for example, like when I. I tell him, oh, like you hold it like this with your, your, your thumb on one side and your fingers on the other. He'll say, uh, no, no, I do it differently. I, I do it a different way. So it's like, 
okay, you can do it the different way, but it's not really going to work very well, you know. Um, but he's really just stubborn like that. If you say, you know, go right, he'll be like, you you all go right, but I, I don't do that. I do something else. I know some people are going to be like, oh, that's cool. You know, he's an individualist, but it's to the point where it's really hard to do anything with him. Like, it's incapacitating. So it's a lot more than just being an individual, you know. It was a huge problem at school. To not be able to follow instructions is a problem. So my niece, I'm like, you know, you take it like this, you do this with it, you put your hand like that. And she's watching me. She's looking right at me, listening attentively, and then she actually does what I just did, you know. Like she, she just readily imitates my actions. And I was like, wow, because that never happened with my son. And she's so focused on like gaining a new skill and really follows the instructions for how to gain that skill. And apparently like they're like that all the time. They're constantly trying to learn new things. Whereas my son, it's like, it's like he doesn't want to learn any new skills. It's really, I'm not trying to complain. I'm just telling you like, that's just how it is. He's not looking for new skills. He doesn't readily get on board with anything. Not, not skills of our choosing, not skills of his choosing. He just avoids. And I have a lot of training as a teacher. I have a, 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 a university degree actually in art education. And then I have a bit more than a, a half of another university degree in English education. So and I worked as a teacher in uh, elementary and community centers. You know, I did stuff like that. So I have some experience with teaching. But it had been a long time. <laughs> and uh, I'm homeschooling my son. And it just dealing with my niece for such a short time, I, I was like, wow, when you're teaching a child that is receptive and responsive, it's so rewarding. It's such a pleasure to do this thing together and to see their progress. It's just so awesome. And that's what I loved about teaching. And I was just like really hit hard with, wow, it's really not like that with my son ever it's like he just none of that stuff happens it's such a battle he he retains information like if he'll watch a video he'll retain information but for in terms of skills that's really really hard very slow really really not and it's nothing like what what usually it's like you know sometimes people say to me oh he's not autistic oh he doesn't have a disability well, you know, try to do something with him. Try to teach him something. You're going to see that there's something's not right, you know. So that was kind of bittersweet for me because it's sweet to be able to teach my niece. Such a great experience. And it's so painful for me at the same time to think, I can't do this with my son. Because if I could, I, it would be so much fun and I would be readily having so many positive interactions with him. But with him, I have to find a way to connect on his terms which is usually through humor. And, and it's not like I don't accept that he has a different path and all that. Yeah, that's all really great. But realistically, though, my son really has a disability. It's, it's a social disability. And I can see it's already made his life a lot harder. And it's probably going to be like that, you know, for the long haul. So, you know, I'm there for him. But when I'm having this kind of interaction with another child that doesn't have that problem, it is a bit hard for me. I keep feeling like I have to explain to, to you, you know, like I'm not saying that there's not good things about my son or that he doesn't have other areas of strength, but it's just it, in the moment to moment, like every interaction with him is so much more of a strain and so many people have just given up. He's been just, he'd been to so many schools, he's had and lost friends, you know, people just don't want anything to do with it. And it's like, I, I just... I live with him and I deal with him all the time and I homeschool him and the Ministry of Education expects me to go through this curriculum and do all that stuff and I'm so willing to do it but he's just so not willing really and it's not even just like oh well like we'll do the activity outside or, or we'll we'll do cooking like he doesn't want to do anything he just doesn't get on board it has to be always on his terms that's a really big problem um, on the plus side though my uh, my relatives were like, oh, you know, Sonia's a really good sort of babysitter. <laughs> because I, I feel like I have to beg, like, oh, please let us come and visit. And they were like, oh, well, you know, there's only one of us here at a time. You know, we're, one of us is always working. And I was like, well, I don't need you to, you know, 
host me. I can just entertain the kids. And they were like, oh yeah. So I'm thinking um, maybe that will turn into um, us being able to go up there because I'm always trying to get my son out of the house and he loves his cousin. So I'm such a battle. Eh? I'm always trying to find somewhere that he can go, that he can be with other people, where he can do something other than be in the house with his mom or, or do my life come along and tow while I do my grown-up stuff. I want my son to just have a chance to have experiences just to be a kid. He's already almost 13 and he, he hasn't really been a kid very much. It's been a very weird, you know, lonely road. All that stuff is hard, you know. I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who are autism parents and you know exactly what I'm talking about. I really appreciate that, that there's a lot of you in my audience. So you, you know, you know what it's like, you know the heartache of knowing that your kid is lonely, is not included, doesn't have a, such a wide, rich variety of experiences, and that you, you have to like beg, you know, to get them included. I'll beg. I, I find a way to make myself indispensable. I'm a really good teacher. I have tons of experience. I can teach your kids to draw. I can teach your kids to hoop. I can teach your kids to make paper Barbie dresses fancy ones like Cinderella. It's like there's nothing I can't do. So I hope that they'll take me up on the offer and let us come over more. That would be a really great silver lining to this whole lockdown thing because the kids are out of school and the parents need somebody to watch the kids. So anyhow, it was it was hard. It was hard being up there. I, I came back and I, I was I was so depressed and I was like, why am I so sad? And I guess it's just everything, you know. Even going out of the lockdown, I feel more pressure on me because when I was on the lockdown, I had one job, plus I was doing YouTube, and now I have to go and do more stuff. And I think now they expect me to get my son back on track with the curriculum. And the dog, our dog has a UTI, and he needs to go out like 10 times a day. Well, it's Aaron's dog, he lives in his apartment, but I have to take this dog out like every hour on the hour until 2 in the morning. It's I don't know, it's kind of stressing me out, you know? It was like during the lockdown, there was a lot less demands on me. It kind of worked, kind of worked for me, actually. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if like we were sort of on a... If I had less demands all the time, I would say I want us to be on lockdown, but if, if, if I had less demands, plus I got to go visit my nieces with my son, like that would be cool. I could live like that. Anyway, I was just really upset. I think it was just painful to be there with them and not be able to hold them. And I couldn't just make a, a normal video. I had to come on here and ramble to you guys. And we can chat in the chat room. You can tell me about all your troubles at the same time. <sighs> Sorry, my son is yelling in the background. Yelling on PlayStation. But at least he has his friends online. Anyhow, that's it. I just want to uh, tell you guys, you know. I, I hope that tomorrow goes better. I'll find something to take my mind off it. Anyway, I hope you guys are all doing well. Happy to see you, happy to chat with you. And uh, God bless you guys. And thanks for listening to me. And I'll see you next time. The truth occurs.